So as I explained in class, the Lee Trotter formula gives us a way of uh, approximating the exponential of the sum of two matrices by the product of the exponentials of the individual matrices. So if the matrices commute, I either commutate it, this, this term A bracket B, which is just by definition A times B minus B times A. If this is zero, A, B equals B times A, then the exponential of the sum is equal to the product of the exponentials. But otherwise, it need not be. And the Lee Trotter formula balances the difference. So it says that there exists, uh, what this big O notation means is that there exists some universal constant C independent of the matrices A and B and even of their dimensions, such that the left hand side is the most C times the spectral norm of the commutator AB minus BA. But since in this constant C, we can find it from the proof, but since we don't really care what the constant C is, we'll just use to keep this big O notation. All right, so how does the proof work? The proof is uh, very simple. It just uses the definition of the exponential in terms of a Taylor series. So on uh, the left-hand side, we have d to the a plus b. By definition, that's equal to the sum over all j from 0 to infinity of 1 over j factorial times a plus b raised to the jth power. In the second term, d to the a times d to the b, what is that? Well, what we, can, what we can do is we can use the same expansion for both of these two terms and multiply them. So we get sum over k from 0 to infinity of a to the k over k factorial, excuse me, times sum over b, sorry, sum over l from 0 to infinity of b to the l over l factorial. Now, if you collect those terms according to the total power of a and b, you get sum over, let's call that j again, you get sum over j from 0 to infinity of the sum over k from 0 to j of a to the k times b to the j minus k. So the total power is j, sorry, is, is j, divided into some portion of it is, is, is on a and some portion of it is, is on b. And so the, the coefficient should be 1 over um, k factorial from the first term and 1 over j minus k factorial from the second term. Now, uh, to make this look like uh, this e to the a plus b expression, let me pull out a 1 over j factorial in front and write that down here, multiply by j factorial here. So then this term is just uh, j choose k. And so we can simplify the difference between these terms, e to the a plus b minus e to the a, e to the b. Both of these expressions start the same way with the sum uh, from j to infinity of 1 over j factorial. So you can factor that out. And we get a plus b to the j minus the second sum here. So what is that? Uh, that's fairly easy to evaluate. We can just use the binomial expansion on, on this expression here. But we can't use a standard binomial expansion because a and b don't commute with each other. So what we have to do is we have to write, um, what we can do is we can write this series here as, as just uh, the sum over all x from 0, 1 to the n. And so there's two to the n terms if, if you write out this expansion, depending on in each term whether you choose a and whether you choose b, sorry, two to the j terms. And so x is what I'm using to, to indicate whether, whether we use a or whether we use b. So let's, let's use a if uh, x k is equal to 0, and b if x k is equal to 1. And what you do is you take the product here, uh, k equals 1 to j. And so this expression It's the same as, as this expression a plus b raised to the jth power. I just, I just expand the series completely. Okay. And then we want to subtract out the second term. The second term, we can, we can factor back into this as uh, sum over x and 0, 1 to the j of um, a to the uh, j minus x b to the x. 
where the this expression absolute value of x that means the hammer weight of x is the number of ones in the string x. So the second expression here is the same as, as this expansion here. Because all, all I've done is actually it's exactly the same as the first expansion, except I put the a terms all first and the b terms all second, which is which is what we have here. All right. So now we've found the difference between them. Uh, the difference between them in, in norm, the norm of uh, e to the a plus b minus e to the a e to the b. Is at most the sum from j equals zero to infinity, one over j factorial, times um, there's two to the j terms, uh, one for every possible string x. So it's just times two to the j times the largest difference. So uh, let's say the max overall x of the difference between the product k equals one to j and a if x k equals zero b otherwise minus a to the j minus x b to the x. Right, so how large is this term here? It's actually fairly easy to bound. So let me just give you a simple example. So say we have b squared a squared minus a squared b squared. So that's b b a a minus a a b b. We can rewrite this as just uh, b times b a minus a b times a. So the first term gives us what we want here. And the second term, b a b a, we have to cancel out. It's plus b a b a minus a squared b squared. Okay. And so what we get is uh, this first term is bounded in norm by the commutator a comma b. Now this, this, this expression is minus the commutator. And then we get another expression uh, that has the same that has the same kind of form, except we've moved uh, one of the a's. So b b a a, we switched this a with this b, so we get b a b a. And so in general, what's going to happen is every time you move an a one step to the left, you're going to pick up a term that has a norm uh, equal to the, the commut bounded by the commutator between a and b times the norm of a and times the norm of b. And those are most one by assumption, so we can ignore we can ignore the, those terms. And so what happens here with with our goal to to bound our goal, we need to move all of the a's all the way to the left. So what that means is we need to move the first one at most j positions, the second one at most j positions, the third one at most j positions, and so on. That's actually quite conservative, but it's a good enough bound for us. So what we can say is that uh, overall. Uh, this, this norm is, is bounded by, let's say, j squared times the norm of the commutator between a and b. Because j squared is a number of a, uh, it's an upper conservative, upper bound on the number of a's that you might have to loop over to the left, and the commutator between a and b gives you a bound on, on, the, uh, on, on the, the norm that you pick up for each term. And in fact, you also have factors of a and b uh, to the j minus x and j minus x minus 1 and x minus 1, but again, we'll, we'll just ignore those terms since they're less than 1. And so here we are, we're actually done now. We can factor out this norm of the commutator, and we get the sum of from j equals 0 to infinity of 1 over j factorial times 2 to the j times j squared. This sum times the commutator and I don't know what this is, but it's a convergent series uh, because the j factorial term dominates. Maybe it's 10, which I don't care. It, it's some constant. And so all that matters is we get some constant times the norm of the commutator. We're done.